July 1984, the body of a nine-year-old girl was found naked from the waist down in woods near Cambridge, Maryland. She had been raped and beaten to death. Police released a composite sketch drawn by two boys who had seen a man walking with a girl, and they got a call saying it looked like ex-Marine Kirk Bloodsworth. Kirk was arrested and could provide no solid alibi. He protested his innocence, but the case went to trial and the courtroom erupted in cheers when he was found guilty and sentenced to die in the gas chamber. In 1992, after reading about the new science of DNA, Kirk's lawyers managed to get a sample of semen that had been preserved from the crime scene tested. This proved his innocence, and he became the first death row inmate to be released based on DNA evidence. In 2003, the real murderer was found. He was a known child sex offender who had been released from jail locally less than two weeks before the murder. I first uh, heard about Dawn's murder on the news and, um, you know, it was god-awful, god-awful murder. I mean, the average person can't fathom what happened to that child. I had been questioned on August 8th. 1984 about it, and I told him I had nothing to do with it. 2.45 the next morning, I mean a boom, boom, boom on my cousin's door, and somebody said, uh, step outside, Mr. Bloodsworth, you're under arrest for first degree murder of Don Venice Hamilton, you son of a bitch. They convicted me on all counts. Guilty first degree murder, guilty of sexual assault, guilty of rape, guilty of all this, and I'm just standing there and my face is about as red as you can get a face. I'm so pissed and mad and, and uh, my father's, you know, trying to object to the judge like that's going to help and, and my mother's just crying, you know. They put me in a cell and a 300 and some pound door slammed shut. It was just like the tailgate of a dump truck. And I could touch either wall by just going like this, literally. I mean, just by an inch either way. And I could hear the cat calls coming from this place, you know. Um, we're going to get you, Kirk. We're going to do to you what you did to that little girl. I, I kind of shut down. Uh, I didn't know what to do, but I felt my emotions coming. And I pushed my face in my blanket and just cried myself to sleep. I kept telling people I was innocent. It's like um, you're in a soundproof room and everybody else is out on the outside, right? And you're in the inside and you're screaming and you're beating on the window and you're trying to tell them. And they, they're just walking by you like you're not even there. Faith is important, you know. You're innocent, you can prove it. It is just gonna take time. I got this book about the first time that uh, DNA was ever used in a criminal case. That's where my epiphany came. If it can convict you, why can't it free you? I started remembering uh, many spermatozoa found, close quotes in a, in a report, in a slide. My lawyer paid for the DNA out of his own pocket, some $10,000 worth. Never asked me for a dime of it back. I was sitting in my cell, and it was about sometime the end of April, maybe, of uh, 1993. And a guard sticks a, a post-it note in my cell. It says, urgent, call your attorney, urgent. I got on the phone, and he was screaming on the other end. And he was, Kirk, you're innocent, man, you're innocent. And I said, I know that. When are you going to get me out of here? My story is not unique, and only 18 of us from death row have been exonerated through DNA. Out of the 142 that we have now, in most cases, there is no DNA, in, and then you have DNA and they won't let you test it. We cannot be that, uh, you know, obstructionist, you know, against the DNA testing because it affects everyone. Dawn Hamilton's family. The euphoria they were feeling at the time that they felt like their daughter had justice was a lie. The 
uh, anguish and pain that my father and mother felt. It was horrible for them. Everybody was telling them that their son was a monster. <laughs>